About a week ago, I posted a video in which I explained why I think Matt Walsh is a worse person than Bill Cosby, and the video performed exceptionally well. It got me 1.9 thousand views, 96 hours of watch time, and 198 comments from some of the most thoughtful and sophisticated people on the internet. A lot of viewers were concerned for my well-being and asking me to seek help. Some felt that the things I was saying were so worrisome that I posed a threat to society, and others were positively dumbfounded by how they even found the video in the first place. But alas, after having read all 198 of their comments, I've come to realize that the people writing them are retards, because in all but one and a half cases, they either misrepresented my position, failed to understand it, or just expressed their offense by insulting me. And as someone who's looking to build an audience that can offer substantive critiques of my views while also enjoying my content, I've come to the conclusion that my default stance of just letting these retards rip in the name of free speech isn't conducive to my goals. So what I'd like to do in this video is explain my philosophy on moderating comments and introduce you to my brand new comment moderation policy. My YouTube channel is effectively a digital version of my house. And when you click on any video on this channel, you are opening a door to one of the many rooms in my house. And ideally, having a novel and exciting conversational experience with me and whoever else is in that room with us. Now in the past, because I used to have some silly intuitions about what it means to have a sincere commitment to protecting free speech, I used to think that anyone and everyone should have a right to say whatever they want in my house, no matter how much it bores or frustrates or annoys me. I thought everyone's opinion matters, everyone has a right to be heard, and it would be remarkably hypocritical of me to silence those who I disagree with on a channel where I speak loudly and proudly about those who I disagree with. The thing I failed to realize, however, is that this policy of uncompromising tolerance for the interjections of imbeciles is deeply inimical to my goal of building an audience of people I f with and to the overall quality of our public conversation. People communicate for a variety of reasons. They can do it to inform, entertain, persuade, insult, enrage, annoy, etc. And for me to say that I won't put my thumb on the scales to sway the balance of the conversation towards any of those more socially useful objectives in my own f***ing house under the guise of some confused notion of protecting free speech is retarded. The mouth-breathing morons in my comment section don't have an inalienable right to come onto my private intellectual property, barge into one of my many bedrooms, and then have an orgy where they lick each other's balls and drink each other's piss ad infinitum. I have no obligation to facilitate their fealties to filth in the name of freedom of speech, for doing so would constitute an affront to the very thing I value most about free expression which is its capacity to expose a person to new ideas and perspectives that can change their life for the better. To me, that's the whole point of freedom of speech. It's not a free pass to talk like an asshole or hold a contrarian opinion for the sake of holding a contrarian opinion. It's an orientation towards conversation that allows for the discovery of useful ideas while also teaching the animals in our midst how to talk like human beings. Okay, so if that's the gold standard that I'm after and that I'm trying to promote on my platform, I can't do that if I just keep letting the dumbest pieces of shit suck all the oxygen out of the room without lifting a finger to stop them. Such a non-interventionist policy has three negative effects. First, it emboldens stupidity and evil by allowing both to spread and fester unchallenged. The cretins and cowards who I encounter in the wilderness find safety in numbers. When they see others who think the same things that they do, they feel vindicated in their ignorance, as if the fact that their fellow retards agree with them is proof of the validity of their views. It gives them the false impression that they're in a position of moral authority and that their opinions are worthy of my or anyone else's consideration. The second thing it does is discourage my target audience from interacting with my content. Not because the content's bad, but because they just don't want to deal with the disgusting freaks in my comment section. To refer back to my room analogy, imagine each of these videos as, a, as an invitation to a dinner party where I'm serving shrimp scampi. Okay, I, I make a title, I make a thumbnail, and I say, hey, hey, you stranger over there, like come, come into my house and have some shrimp scampi with me. It's gonna taste great. Okay, so if you accept that invitation by clicking on the video and you walk through the door and you see to your shock and horror that I have allowed all of the other guests to just shit with abandon on all of their plates and lick it up, you know, while we're waiting for the shrimp scampi, that's going to make you want to leave no matter how good the shrimp is. Okay, and that's how I'm shooting myself in the foot by just tolerating all these fucking idiots like in my comment section. I I'm sure. It's happened multiple times where someone cool and interesting will come to the comment section and be like, this place is a fucking shit hole. Like, I, I don't want to spend, I don't want to spend another second here. And then they'll just leave. When in other circumstances, like if I actually had a policy 
they'd be like, oh, okay, these are civilized, intelligent people who I can have a conversation with, and it's not a waste of my fucking time. So, yeah, that's issue number two. But issue number three is that it adds a ton of noise that drowns out the signal of my presentation, along with the vibe that I'm trying to cultivate on this channel and in my wider community. So, for example, when I'm talking to you right now about my views on free speech and content moderation and how I'm weighing the pros and cons and all that shit, like, in addition to actually sharing my views on those topics, I'm promoting a style of conversation that seeks to advance honesty, clarity, coherence, transparency, a sense of humor, and like 30 other useful social norms and values that I think would make the world a markedly better place. Okay, so I'm setting an example for how I think people should talk, and my goal is to export that example. So if my goal is to spread that vibe, that essence, that whatever you want to call it, and make it as sexy as possible for whoever witnesses it, it doesn't make sense for me to partition the attention of whoever I'm sending it to in such a way that in addition to focusing on the goods that I'm selling, they're also focusing on my competitors. Because for some stupid reason, I chose to ship my competitors' goods in the same box that I ship my own. So that's just bad salesmanship. You, sh you shouldn't be doing that. You should just, if you got something you want to sell, sell it exclusively and make that the focus of, of your pitch. And that's what I think. So to summarize the three problems of this hands-off approach, it empowers my enemies, it alienates my friends, and it detracts from the social atmosphere that I'm trying to curate on this channel. So now that we've established that those are the problems, here is the solution that I'm proposing to fix them. My comment moderation policy is very simple. If I read your comment and judge you to be either an idiot or an asshole, you will be permanently banned from opening your mouth on this channel, and there's nothing you can do about it. No appeals, no bitching, no debates. You're finished. But lest you accuse me of silencing you, have no fear, for although every comment you leave on this channel will be automatically deleted upon my deeming you to be no one worth talking to, I'm not actually kicking you out of my house. I'm simply moving you to another room, as it were. And the room in question is a digital daycare that I've built for you and the many thousands of other children who I'm going to piss off throughout the rest of my upcoming long and illustrious career. There you will find your name, the date and time at which you left the comment, a link to the video you left it on, your retard pronouns, and of course, the full and unedited text of your original comment. With the introduction of this new policy, I believe I have solved all three of my problems in one fell swoop. I've disincentivized my enemies from thinking that I give a fuck about their opinions and that it's worth their time to try sharing them with me. I've evicted them from the parts of my house that I would prefer my friends to occupy, and I've set a clear and robust standard for the behavior I expect from my audience by maintaining a public archive of the kinds of utterances that will get them permanently banned from this channel. This repository should also expedite the process of you deciding whether or not you fuck with me. If you take a look at the record and see that I've pissed off fans of Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, Donald Trump, Andrew Tate, and Hassan Piker, that gives you a rough sense of the kind of person that I am, my intellectual and moral principles, and whether or not you'd want to join my community. In the spirit of FDR, I'm allowing you to judge me by the enemies I have made and decide for yourself whether you want to empower me to make even more of them by joining my community and becoming my friend. Naturally. All this talk of moderation and quality control and censorship may have you concerned about my ability to resist the effects of audience capture and the seductive allure of just closing myself off to the opinions of anyone who disagrees with me. What if I'm just another Alex Jones or Brett Weinstein or Lex Friedman-esque character who's figured out that the best infinite money glitch on earth is telling idiots on the internet exactly what they want to hear? What steps am I taking to make sure that I don't devolve into that breed of asshole? Well, the first step I'm taking is clearly expressing my commitment to being intellectually honest, forthrightly addressing criticism of my views, and acknowledging my mistakes, in the hopes of garnering an audience who will hold me to those standards. I'm telling you up front, if you ever see me talking like a bitch-ass nigger, saying some shit that doesn't make any sense, or refusing to admit when I clearly shit the bed, tear me a new asshole immediately. Okay, have no mercy on me or the new asshole that you are going to tear me. Be as creative and effusive in your criticism of me as you would like to be. Don't go easy on me. And one could respond to that by saying, okay, well, wh what if I tried doing that, but then you just deleted the comment? In such a case, which I must say up front, I, I don't think would ever happen, but if it did, if on the off chance it were to ever happen, uh, I'm, I'm giving you my explicit permission to expose me for being an unprincipled hack using the tools that I've provided you. Find your comment in the archive, explain why my decision to ban you was unjustified, and make enough noise about it that I'm reminded of my hypocrisy and cowardice at every venue I frequent for the rest of my life. Make me pay for my decision to take a public stand in defense of my principles, because after all, that's the whole point of taking a public stand in defense of a principle. 
When a nigga like me gets up on a soapbox and says, I believe that Principal X is so important that I will stake my professional reputation in defense of Principal X, implicit in such a declaration is the understanding that should the nigga fail to defend Principal X in precisely the terms that he publicly committed himself to defending it, he is to stop having a professional reputation. That's what hoes like Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh had in mind when eight years ago they both published articles explaining why they would never vote for Trump. And because both of those spineless faggots are allergic to personal responsibility, a conservative principle that they ostensibly cherish, they have since quietly deleted those articles from the internet. But that could never be me, dog. I could never. And so in the public declaration that I'm currently making, I do declare my commitments to intellectual honesty, open-mindedness, fairness, and transparency and implore anyone who shares a commitment to those values to hold me accountable for anything I say or do which would constitute a betrayal of those values. So that's what I plan to do to make sure I don't close myself off to legitimate criticism. As for the audience capture piece, I'm not really sure what to do about that because I feel like I've seen enough instances of people getting captured by their audiences that I I'm aware that it's a problem, but I don't know what systems level fix I can implement to prevent it from happening to me apart from just continuing to set the tone for this channel at every opportunity. So to do that right now, this is my house, okay? And you are a guest in my house. I am happy to host you. I hope you have a wonderful time here, and I'm confident that you will, okay? I'm a very convivial spirit. I'm a chill guy. We can vibe. We can shoot the shit. We can argue. I'm, I'm down to do whatever. But please, for your own sake, don't ever adopt the delusion that you have a right to tell me how to behave in my own house. Granted, everything I just said about holding me accountable for my own hypocrisy still stands, right? N nothing changes there, but what I'm talking about here is the problem of tone and content policing. You have no right to dictate to me what I'm going to say or how I'm going to say it. So please, get that thought out of your fucking head, because it's never going to happen. As I've alluded to earlier, my job as a content creator is to curate a vibe that is worthy of your attention. The better the vibes are, the more real you show up to the channel, and the more fun we can have moving forward. So in the service of that objective, I'll be screening each comment for the following three qualities. The first is clarity, the second is relevance, and the third is style. For clarity, I don't really give a fuck about spelling or grammar. All I'm looking for is an intelligible thought. Whatever you write, I don't want it to take longer than two seconds for me to understand what you're trying to say, because if it does, I'm, I'm not even going to waste any time checking for relevance and style. I'm just going to... You're headed straight to the daycare. As for relevance, whatever you say has to be related to something that I've said in starting the conversation. You have to show some engagement with the substance of my presentation. And when it comes to style, all I ask is that you be more intelligent than you are stupid, more rigorous than you are lazy, and more charitable than you are cynical. Just talk normal, okay? Talk to me and everyone else in the comments in the same way that you would be talking to us if you met us in real life. So a couple playful jabs here and there are okay, but Keep it civil, all right? mind your manners. The goal here is to create an environment where we can all learn from and enrich each other, even if we don't totally agree on every single issue. One superlative example of this that I can think of off the top of my head, this one guy who, I think it was eight or nine months ago, like when I posted my video on Hassan Piker, he left a comment, he, he was a socialist, I'm not a socialist, I don't think socialism is gay and cringe, but he left a very respectful comment saying, look, I get that you think it's cringe and that Hassan's a, a bitch, but don't knock it till you try it and read some writings from socialists like George Orwell. And he recommended a couple of essays of Orwell's that, that I really enjoyed. And I, I came away from that exchange thinking, wow, like this person could have been an asshole, but they chose to not be an asshole and gave me something to read that made me a marginally more intelligent and informed person. So that's the kind of vibe I'm going for here. I want all of you to leave my comment section a happier, healthier, and wealthier person than you were before you went into it. And that, my friend, is basically everything I have to say on this topic. Uh, if you like the new rules, that's great. If you don't like them, that's even better. Don't let the door hit you on your way out. And yeah, time for the outro. So like and subscribe if you put the fives. Give me some bread and I'll make you a meal. Thanks for watching me talk my shit and letting me share the way that I feel. See you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye. The ego is not your amigo, amigo. I got the juice and it ain't no placebo. Finding myself like an emo, emo. When all said and done, I'll be big at the Beatles. We go way back, but I had to cut you off.
off Cause they see me smack dab, I don't fuck with you at all Took the summer off just to readjust, dog. And I brought it back round like I hit a tether ball Basically I'm saying I cook summer in the fall And the only two above me are God and my mom All the motherfuckers gonna ball Cause they could've chipped in But they thought the kid would lost as a cost I'm being unaware and uninvolved The only thing I'm on is underrated overall Let the uninitiated tell me if I'm wrong Till then I'm 